This is the lower Cosumnes River in California's Central Valley. Every winter, the river floods acres and acres of grassland, fields, and forest. The Cosumnes is the last undammed river flowing from the Sierra to the Delta. This is what California must have looked like two centuries ago. For the last two decades, the Nature Conservancy has been restoring the floodplain and riparian forest of the lower Cosumnes. For almost as long, Roman Lawrence has been photographing here. His work captures the mystery and beauty of the winter floods. For me, it creates very unusual landscape to photograph because all the time is different. You come here and every day will be different. You don't know what to expect. Sounds like wind can be advantage, but most of it with view camera wind is not very welcome because the exposure is usually longer than normal. Roman is a Polish immigrant. His commitment as a photographer to the Kasumnis River is akin to Ansel Adams' relationship to Yosemite, or Edward Western's love of Point Lobos. He is a passionate conservationist. The simple reason would be to kind of inspire through my photograph other people to come and see it and, uh, and preserve and restore. Uh, and most people don't even know about the existence of, of preserve. I'm always drawn to water, and I, I don't know why, but uh, I think so it's uh, something to do with how important a role water plays in Central Valley. And, uh, and we are so greedy and thirsty, you know, that we take all the water for agriculture and for domestic use, and almost don't think that we have to share with wildlife, you know. And, for me, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm triggered by nature and I feel the response. And there's something in the water where it will help with my photography. And the changing of the water give you the always fresh perspective, you know, so always something new. So, and sometimes you can see that in my photograph and has nothing to do with me. It's, it's just the place, you know. So. Uh, I get rewarded for that. <laughs> I don't know if I deserve it, but but capturing that is always not easy. You know, you have to be here right time. Roman is a patient photographer. Most of his images here are taken right before dawn. There is a moment when the light is just beginning to illuminate the land and the water becomes still. This is when he works. The sun is bright and hot in the Central Valley. It will start to heat the air and create a breeze very quickly, destroying the glass-like reflections. Last time when I photographed on, a, on another area, I was so involved in my photograph that my canoe flowed away <laughs> and I get stranded. And then instead of chasing the canoe, I went and uh, did the photograph of the canoe and I have a, and it's kind of phantom canoe. Roman photographs throughout the Central Valley. Farms, vineyards, roads, all beneath a majestic sky. His work is developing an international reputation and demanding significant prices in galleries. First, I didn't see the value of the place because I didn't know nothing about it. And I like to be rooted in a place I, I can't change places, you know. So for me, my identity is with the land and knowing where I am, and, uh, where I live, uh, give me uh, stability and, and kind of security. You know, I have to belong to to place. And so Central Valley became, and now even if I could move from here, I, it, just thinking about it uh, make me uneasy. So. I'm probably stuck here. Uh. Roman lives with his wife, the poet Lillian Valley, here in Modesto. They came here years ago when the Bay Area proved too expensive. He still shows his work in a local frame shop. You know how people are. They think that what's happening in art or in photography or in poetry is somewhere else in some big cultural center. And in fact, it's always going on right under your nose. 
Particularly in, in the valley, the beauty here is subtle. These are very subtle changes here in seasons and something like a marsh is, is a very subtle kind of beauty. Now this one over here is Dry Creek Park. Lillian is an ardent conservationist too and a well-spoken one. Our work is to uh, raise awareness of, of a Central Valley identity. What does that mean to live here? And I, and I think it means to regard certain things with respect, whether it's the native history and the native cultures or uh, the landforms, the rivers. I, I think respect has really been missing. I studied with a, po with a Polish poet, Czesław Miłosz, and one of the things that he said about California was, the landscape lacks nothing but glorification. People do not glorify this landscape, and this one particularly has been denied, derided. I think what we've yearned to do, what we've strived to do, is to get people to think about it with affection, and, and the way you do that is to show them the beauty of it because the beauty inevitably leads to trying to arrive at some sense of justice in, in the way you treat it. Roman still uses very basic photographic processes. He insists on doing all his own darkroom and finishing work here in his converted garage. The increased demand for his images has put strains on his time. All the chemicals I mix by myself, the less technology, the better for black and white photography. So I try to keep it simple. You see here from my last trip, some negatives, they're all developed in a pyro. I loved it because they produced the wonderful stain. It's, it's a stain on it. It's kind of greenish yellow stain. It has wonderful quality. Sometimes the negative look better than real print, but uh, my print's never the same. Um, every print slightly is different and I don't like to keep it exactly the same. So when you get my print and you get another one, it could be completely different. For the past few years, Roman and Lillian have been visiting Lithuania. Though it borders his Polish homeland, Roman was never able to visit during the Soviet era. Now he is fascinated with the place. Lillian was writing um, a doctor degree on Czesław Miłosz and do some research in Vilnius and I decided to visit her and just fall in love right away in, in the city and then stumble on this church and, and I was planning to sit down and, you know, and, 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 and just not interrupt in the, and I see this lighting, you know, just starting happen and I decide, I feel uncomfortable that I decide to make the photograph anyway, you know, I'm glad I did it. and. Um, and this person was in the church. These two people wasn't in the church. They just walked during my long exposure. So they kind of ghostly figure. I see his breath, you know, so called in the church that this is the little white thing there. It's his breath. In 2005, a ruling was handed down mandating that water flow be restored to the San Joaquin River. The river below Modesto had been dry for many years because of diversions for agricultural and city use. Restoration work has begun and Roman has been photographing it. Look at the class. Today, however, because of heavy winter rains and breached levees, the lower San Joaquin is running out of its banks across acres of field. <laughs> the river is coming back. The river is coming back. <laughs> Finally, river, don't want to die. There have been people, farmers, conservationists, teachers, uh, people who live in that area who have seen that river whole, who would like to have it back, who can't imagine living in this place without that river. So uh, they persisted. That lawsuit lasted for 14 years. Compared to the consumers, you know, which is live, pulsing river, sun walking is a basically dead river because it don't run for 43 miles and today because of the rain it show again the power so used to you know used to be like one be again live river oh look at all that see the pelicans oh white pelicans it's a forgiving <laughs> landscape and so it heals up very quickly if it has the right ingredients People think landscape photography is easy. 
it takes a lot of negating of yourself. And uh, you saw him trudging around, getting up. It, it's consuming. And it has consumed him. And I think because of his childhood, which I think was extremely painful, you know, with really a brutal father and um, going to nature as a kind of solace, going out and, and I think having that beauty heal him. I think, he know, I, I think he knows how to go out there and be nothing, let it just come through him. And I, I think that's a great gift that he has. And that, that gift to be delicate, to be vulnerable, to let that surface. And I think people really respond to that. The primary thing is keep working and do the work. Keep coming back to the same places and see them with different eyes. And if you do, and uh, I think so plays reveal to you. I think he's a dramatically different person now after the photography than he was before. It really, uh, it really did heal him. And that's, that's been a very beautiful thing to watch, you know, to be a witness to.